Guys, I just want to answer a quick question I get asked a lot on how I run uh, low boost with the APSI wastegate. So I run around five pounds of boost on my uh, Wrangler build that I'm sure you guys have seen. Um, and it's with an APSI wastegate, which is the, I think the lowest wastegate they make. Um, I've never seen one below that. I'm sure they're out there. But uh, I just want to show the basically the theory behind it and what I did and, uh, and how it works together. Uh, this will apply to any kit, not just my kit. Um, it'll apply to any car that you're turbocharging uh, that you kind of want to increase the boost slowly as you're tuning so you're not going straight to 8 PSI and uh, God forbid mess something up. So uh, we'll get into it. But uh, basically, like I said, this is a 8 PSI wastegate that comes on uh, most turbos. Um, and I guess I'll kind of break down what, what it does, how it works, and how I kind of uh, figured out how to get uh, less than 8 PSI out of it. So basically your wastegate acts like a bypass valve in your uh, turbine housing, which takes, so obviously your exhaust gas spools your turbine, uh, which spools your compressor, which gives you boost. Um, basically what a wastegate does is it bypasses the flow f into the turbine wheel right out your exhaust. So it uh, gives it less exhaust gas to spool the turbo, uh, keeps you at that same boost level. Um, so what a, how a wastegate actually works is it taps, there's a little uh, vacuum port or a boost port that comes off your compressor housing, which actually um, pressurizes the, the actuator inside the wastegate. And inside the wastegate, there's a spring with the, uh, that's connected to this rod that gets pushed down and opens this uh, wastegate valve and bypasses that gas. So this is my highly detailed drawing. You can tell I'm not an artist, but this might explain a little better. So again, this is the uh, side of the wastegate where your boost line will run into. So basically there's a, a diaphragm in the middle and then it's attached to this um, rod coming out of your wastegate, which is this rod. Uh, and there's a spring in between that diaphragm and the outer housing of the wastegate. So uh, if you guys have taken physics, um, uh, just a basic free body diagram. Um, so your boost pressure is coming in and it's pushing against this wall basically but this spring is gonna resist that force uh, and keep it shut until this pressure uh, exceeds the force on this wall to actually open and move this spring back and uh, open your, your gate. Uh, so obviously, um, if you wanna run less than eight PSI, you can't really open these things up and change it to a smaller spring. So what you can actually do is add an external spring to actually fight against the internal spring, if that makes sense. So what you're doing, and here we go with my excellent drawing skills, is you're adding another spring on the outside, which is going to create a force in the same direction as the boost coming in and um, add to the pressure that's gonna open up the wastegate. Uh, so what you can do to, um, I'll show you the setup now, uh, basically what I did is I put spacers in here. Uh, this is based on your spring, so you can run any spring. Um, but you put a spring on here, and this one happened to be small enough that I didn't have to run a washer here uh, to actually push up against the end of the uh, rod of the wastegate. So what these springs do is if you're, again, if you take any physics, uh, your force of your spring is equal to the spring constant times the displacement. Uh, this won't get too boring. Hopefully it'll kind of help you guys out. But uh, again, that, that force of the spring comes from displacement and your spring constant. So based on your spring constant, if you wanna get a higher force pushing out, uh, which is gonna help open your wastegate sooner with lower boost, instead of buying different springs, different weight springs, stuff like that, uh, you can actually add spacers to increase the X value, which is increasing the displacement, kind of preloading the system, uh, getting more force out of that smaller spring. Uh, this will kind of help, I guess, explain that uh, theory. So right now this spring is fully, whoops, is fully, um, geez, uh, it's fully opened up, I guess you'd call it, so that it's not being displaced at all, so it's not creating any force uh, at the top here. But if this is a four inch spring and I push it down to, let's say, three inches, um, that's going to displace this one inch. So as you displace this, as this value goes up, this value always stays the same if you use the same, the same spring, uh, you get a higher force out of it. So that's the theory behind the spacers here. So you can use any kind of aluminum spacers. I even had to use a nut here 
because uh, I ran out of spacers, but again, that's going to work fine. Uh, that theory with that equation is actually the same theory that when you turn your boost up. So APSI, when they say it's an APSI spring, that's the lowest boost you can run. If you want to run a higher boost, um, there's a double nut on this shaft right here, and that'll actually thread this into this, which will shorten that rod and add a preload. So this wall is going to come in a little bit and again, preload the internal spring, which is going to give you a higher force that you need to counteract with boost to open up uh, that actuator. So that's kind of the physics behind it. Um, so if you have any questions, let me know uh, in the comments, but also I'll give you a quick de uh, demonstration how I test uh, if it's good or not. So this is a uh, boost gauge, any old boost gauge that you can get out of your car, um, that I use a T and uh, put one side to the uh, wastegate actuator, one side is going to your boost gauge, and the other one's gonna go to any air compressor that you can hook a rubber hose up to. Um, so this one's just slipped on. So really what I, what I do is um, open the valve a little bit until I get some air into the uh, actuator, and then look at the reading on the boost gauge, and then I usually use my other hand just to hold on to the, the actuator or the arm, uh, just to feel it, because it's hard to look at the gauge and then look at the actuator at the same time. So I kind of use the sense of feel to uh, figure out what the actual timing is, uh, what pressure it's opening up. So um, if, if you're targeting 5 PSI, um, this should move as soon as that gauge gets to 5 PSI. So we'll put this in, and you'll see it move as soon as it gets to about 5. It may be opening a little bit sooner. Uh, I still have to adjust it. You can even go slower. And then you'll see it start to move. So that's kind of the way I do it. Um, it. I'm sure there's other ways to do it, but this one kind of makes the most sense to me. Um, and that's how I run 5 PSI. And if you do want to turn the boost up, you usually don't even have to take the spring out. You can use that double nut and actually tighten it because this spring is usually a lot stronger than this spring. So again, that, that displacement is going to create a bigger force on the internal spring. Um, so that's just a question I just wanted to answer real quick. It's easier to see on video than it is to explain it in a comment or on the forum. So. Uh, any questions, uh, let me know down below. Check out the Jeep form. Check out my Jeep build. Um, and that's about it. Thanks.